welcome, welcome. This is Game Doubt Gamer. Unboxing video today again. Here we have, don't read the title of the video. Hopefully, well, we will see what's in this box. An untested Atari 800 home computer built in uh, 82 or 1982 or 83, somewhere in that time frame. Maybe earlier, we'll find out. These, uh, I have a problem. I have two of these already, but that's an even number, so I can't do that. I have to have another one. Actually, this one was really cheap comparative to a lot of the other ones going on on uh, eBay, so I couldn't help myself. It looked nice. The seller said it was in, in very good condition. The light was yellow in the video, sort of like this one. The light is yellow here. I'm using an incandescent or something light bulb here. Yeah, regular standard light bulbs. So, uh, well, let's let's do it. Let's see what this Atari 800 is all about and if it will work. We'll test it. You know, we'll try to get it working. We'll see what's in it. Maybe the seller pulled everything out before he sell, sold it off the chips off the board or something. Who, who knows if I've been played? I don't think so. Seller had a good uh, rating or whatever. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. It has the case. I, I don't have these. Oh, this is nice already. I don't have the covers. Look at that. He included. I asked him to these these Atari 800s. If you buy them, when if you ever buy it on eBay, uh, Atari 800. Tell the seller in your notes, in your buyer's notes, tell the seller to wrap it very, you know, ex like nearly excessively. They're very fragile. The plastic, these were like the first home gaming computer ever released. And the plastic, they used a thin plastic. They've always been a little brittle. All the later Atari home computers were fine, but the Atari 800 and Atari 400s are very, they are brittle. The plastic is thin. Here's a cover. Look at this beautiful. Wow. Oh, this is not too bad. I don't smell any cigarette smoke. I think he said non-smoking home. I forget. This, the auction was bad though. He, he had the computer on the floor. Don't put the computer on the floor. What do we have? Oh yeah, Frogger. This is actually a good game. Frogger. Oh no, Popeye. Oh, oh okay. Popeye. My bad. Popeye. I haven't played this one, I don't think. It's in a Ziploc. That's nice. Put, put it in a Ziploc. Actually, the cartridge... Yeah, I mean, I can tell it's used, but well, we'll see. Frogger is a good one, though. Same with Defender. Very good game. I don't like Pac-Man because they did a bad job of it. There's a new Pac-Man. You can get it. They made it like 2014. Uh, you can download it for free. And that Pac-Man is very good. There's a, there's a few different new ones, actually, like revisions. He kept updating it. I'm trying to figure out where to put all this stuff. Here's the computer. There's dust on it, but... Ugh. Okay. Yeah, he, he did good packing. Uh, he used a good box. This is a good, good quality box. I don't want to just like pull it out. I want to not right away. I want to take my time with this. These it does need a cleaning. It's dirty. They get dirt in between the texture on the plastic. It gets like this grime. It's upside down. Let's pull a little bit more paper out. Poof. There's no smell. It's just the dust. It's a little. It is. It needs a clean. Fingers crossed. I don't see any. Now, what's nice already, looking at this, you see no cracks. Nothing's broken. In fact, maybe even the cartridge door. It, unusual here, the cartridge door is not. The lever, the cartridge lever, is not broken. So I got a pull. I got a. I got a situation here with this RF cable. All right, RF cable is out. Okay, he didn't put a receipt in, but all right, so here it is. A little on you, he did not want to power it on, which is actually the very right thing to do. Don't power it on if you don't know. Actually, the 400 and 800s, the power supply for these, um, 
is very, it doesn't have, I don't think it has any electronics, it's just uh, a tr more of a transformer. Okay, so th this, usually this breaks, this little lever, it, it, uh, let's see. Be very careful. I don't think this one's broken though, it's fine. Does it open though? Here it does. Okay, you, this, yeah, very squeaky. Okay, good. He didn't have it open in this. Okay, you can already tell us it has screws here. I don't know if you guys can see. It doesn't use the levers. It has screws holding the top of the... There, maybe you can see the screws. Oh, I need to focus it, maybe. Focus. What's going on with my camera? Okay. All right, it has screws. So that means it's a late model. That's as good. Because they has a GTIA chip in there, probably very likely. If it doesn't, then someone swapped it. All right, there's a grease. You can lubricate this. This is very important when you get these. Use a. There's a grease that's safe for plastic. You can't just oil. You can, but it'll stain the plastic. But see how it's squeaky? You do not. You it can. You can snap these. Uh, the hinge, especially if you take the shield off. Do, uh, my, Never take the shield. There's a shield on the underside of this uh, top case, and if you take that off, then the then this door doesn't have anything to go to push off of to work to function, and it's much more likely to snap. I broke one like that, so lubricate it first, maybe then. But even taking this, this the four screws that hold the shield, um, if you turn them, they'll probably just snap the whole post that's holding it. So don't even try to take that shield off. Someone in another video did that. If it's, you know, if it's old and the plastic gets more and more brittle. Anyway, this... I'm trying to help, you know, make sure people don't break these. It looks like all the keys... All the keys are good. This is... is this, I don't... It might be a different keyboard than the other one. I don't know yet. I have two of these actually. One of them is like mint condition in the original box and has the original bag. These came with a bag and then the styrofoam and the, the bags are I think very rare. Um, it's sort of like the bag that the Atari 850 interface, If you, there's a video on my channel of me unboxing an Atari 850 interface. You'll see it has that bag that's not sealed. Alright, well let's let's look at the underside. But first, before I do that, I will close this and I want to put something soft down. I don't want to just put it down on, because this table, I don't want it to scratch or scuff. I think I'll just use some, some of this paper. Hold on. I know this seems kind of Beverly Hillbillies, but we're going to do it. Okay. Okay, good. So this... Here is, will it focus? All right, so you can see here 163, the stamped numbers. So that means the 16th week of 1983 is when this was made. So it's a very late model. They did make them, I think, for uh, five or six more weeks. So it's not the very end. But 23,800 is the serial number. There are ones made in other ones that don't have the 83S, but most of them I've seen in the... United States have this. I can make it brighter. Huh? There you go. It actually looks very nice on the underside. I can see the PCB over here on the power supply. That's the power supply board behind the grill. I've 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 wondered. In my last video, I said Atari didn't make many much money on these. Actually, they did, they lost ten million dollars <laughs> on the four hundred and eight hundreds, if I understand it correctly. Making over like over three years. All the joystick ports are there. So this looks great. All right, let's try it. Wow, I'm excited. This is awesome. This is really nice. These are really, I just love collecting these. I love these and I use them. I love, I just think they're awesome. I, I think they're awesome. I really love these Atari computers. There's something, I have an Amiga 500. I, I like these more than the Amiga. The Amiga's great. Oh, it's awesome. 
But I, something about these, I, it was probably just because it was my first computer. They say, like, your first big game. You ever read these articles? They say if you search, like, your first big MMO or your first big game is, like, you, one you like the most or whatever. And it's the same, you know, it's that, that's what's going on for me. So it's all in the head. <laughs> But I do love them. All right. Well, the the door. The, this is not broken. The lever. There's a pieces of plastic that, that break over time, and the lever gets loose. It's hard to describe, but it it still works. But it's broken when it does break. You you can't tell right away until you use it. All right. Anyway, what well, seems like all the keys are there, and now we're going to find out if it powers on. I actually, you know what? Before that. I need to take it up. I need to fully clean it, take it apart, you know, look at it, make sure everything looks okay. Who knows what's in there? You know, if there's a, a, a mouse, a dead mouse or something, clean that. There's probably not, but they can't get into this. But oh, I, I love these things. These things are so good. I paid $50 for this. This is great. This $50 for one of these? That's great. That's awesome. That's, that's really good. It's, if it works, it's worth well over $100. So, you know, I could turn this into a business, but you can't make too much money off the Atari 800. You can just make a little spending money or something. The keys seem great. This is a fully mechanical keyboard on these. All right, let's, let's do the next step. It might be a few hours for me. i got to get ready to go out and do some stuff, but you won't see any time pass. All right, now I've had my dinner. All right, now I just I took the screws off from the underside, and now these are tricky. Do I have to first? I think I first need to take the top cover off. You can't. You have to. Yeah, I'm trying to not break it. All right, we got screws here. These two last two screws. dust. The plan here is to take this apart and then dust it outside. Alright. Alright, now that's off. This is tricky. I've always found these sometimes can be tricky. This one, there we go, that was easy. See, here's the shield on the underside. And it has these four screws here. Do not, my advice, see, look at this, I'll show you. See, these screws have a little plastic thing that they screw into, and that plastic can be brittle when you try to undo it, and it just snaps. But it depends on how yellowed the plastic is. If the plastic is not yellowed, this one's not bad, it might be okay. I think the other one was stored in a hot garage or something. This one doesn't look nearly as bad, so those may come out just fine. But if you don't need to take it off, don't. Because see how, if you, see how this hinge works? It, works. it works off the shield. I think that's what it's squeaking on, I don't know. Maybe not, maybe it's the hinge at the bottom. Alright, well that's, that's okay. All right, this is tricky. Here we have, okay, so here, ah, good news. Looks like all the cards are in. This is very, very good news. I probably have 48K. Yeah, all the ones made in 83 had 48K and had the uh, GTIA graphics chip. And this does not have the uh, housing to the cards. It just has the bare cards, which is fine. Let's see. We're sneezing in here tonight. Here I have a dusty computer I'm taking apart. These can be difficult to separate the top from the bottom of the case. That's what I'm trying to do here. Got to pull it forward and up. See, it doesn't want to come here. It's, it may never have been opened.
yeah, it's like caught on something. I don't know what, but that's my other 800. The mint one, it has the same issue going on. And all the screws are out. Oh no, there's one more. There's one more. <laughs> okay. Okay. There we go. Try again. See, I don't want to snap it. it. It's a good color. This is a very. Good, this is a good color. Once it's cleaned up, it's going to look nice. But I can't get the. I can't get the case part. See, I do weights. I'm. I'm. You know, I'm rather strong, and I'm trying to be real careful without breaking it. No, it's not coming up. It doesn't have the, uh, there's, sometimes there's a shield. Usually there is a shield here, but that, if it doesn't, that's okay. A lot of times the plastic, the metal shield is missing, but the f the foam tape is there, and it's gotten a, made a big mess. As it deteriorates, it puts a big bunch of gunk down here. And there is gunk down here I need to clean out. All right, I'm gonna keep trying this and get, come back when I get it off. All right, I flipped it upside down, and sure enough, it seems to be coming apart. It's at least the one part is. See, it's open in the back. I doubt. I don't think this has ever been opened, which is good news. Well, I got the back open. Let's see what we can do with the top now. I do not want to break this. I'm a little worried. But I do not want to power it on without inspecting. I want to at least look at the cap, the capacitors on the power supply. No, the bottom. <laughs> what a mess. The bottom is coming up in one way, but not the other. Yay, I got the bottom of the case off. That's the bottom. It's dusty. And there's the underside of the shielding on the motherboard, and the power supply is over here on the left. Here's the speaker. That's the built-in speaker. Keyboard. Get this out now. Oh, no wonder. Here, there's this. No wonder the top wouldn't come off. There's a screw here. There's a screw there. Now I see what needs to happen. Okay. No wonder the top won't come off. It's still screwed in. I'm going to take a photo of that. I don't know. I think this one is just for the power supply and not for the case. Let's see. Now I think I need to take this one off. Alright, two screws in t inside for the top half. I've asked around on the other Atari 800, I asked in forums and stuff, and no one knew. No one said, oh, there's two screws inside, you need to take the bottom off first. No one said that. I even called Best Electronics. He didn't know. I said, I removed the five screws, it won't come off. He's like, ooh. Alright, let's flip it over. All right, I got it all apart. There was another. There was three. There were three screws. So that's the the big aluminum block for RF shielding. 
And uh, over here is the top side of the case with the keyboard. I did see one pin on joystick port 4 is missing. But joystick port 4 is not co too common to use. I think people may have used it for modems or something. Alright, let's dust it. It's, there's dust. So I need to take it outside. Let's do that. Alright. This light, outdoor light is fading, but there's some. Alright, so a lot of dusting work here. I'll keep doing it. Alright, so looking at the caps on the power supply, they don't look too bad. They don't look bolt too bulged, a little bit. They, I'm sure it all needs changing, but I think it'll work for now. But I still have some more dusting to do here. That's a basic do, but I think I need to take the... Maybe I'll just not wait on the cartridge things, but they've got dirt in there. Maybe Q-tips. But it's good to take the thing off completely and clean it, but maybe not. <laughs> I'll just keep it the way it is. Okay, it's been sort of dusted. Not fully cleaned. I'll, I'll get in there with a Q-tip. I gave it a little bit of a wipe with alcohol. Lens cleaning wipe. But, uh, let's try. Putting it back together. <coughs> and there's the case. I need to do the keyboard. I think I will do the keyboard. It, uh, it has two screws. Two screws on the underside here. And then the whole thing pops off. Maybe, maybe two more. I think just the two. And then I can clean each key. Scr scrub each key down. And get it nice and shiny. I doubt the keyboard's ever been cleaned. It looks dusty. The light is hard to tell, but it's dusty. You'll see it in a, in a few minutes, or very shortly here. Now, with the bottom of the uh, case, the problem with uh, scrubbing this is it has the label, the Atari label. I do not want to soak that in water and damage it. So this will get a wipe down. It will not be scrubbed with a brush. Fortunately, it's not too dirty. But it does have some gunk in here that did not get cleaned with the uh, cans of air, the air, air blower. Alright, so here is the latch for the cartridge door. And you see these two little plastic pins. Here's the metal this part flexes, but the two little plastic things, there's one here and then left and right side, those are what break. So you need to be very careful pulling the latch door if you don't know. Probably most of you by now do. But these break, these little things, and then and then it just doesn't function as well. But this one, had, both of the pegs are still in place. Very nice. Alright, I've wiped the bottom part of the case and the top is clean. I just used water and a plastic dish scrubber. Bristly dish scrubber. Uh, I can see joystick port 4 has pins missing on the back side. 
So there's something seriously up with joystick port 4 again. Why is it? What is up? This is my second 800 with problems with port 4. I know, but I think people connected their modem to port 4 or other devices use the joystick port 4. Alright. I mean, I didn't like wipe the boards down or anything. I can see a little bit of dust. Nothing bad. In the top. Now, I, 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 again, I did this with uh, a plastic dish scrubber. It's really clean. It's really a nice looking. Uh, it's not yellowed much. It's very little, really. This is above average. The eBay seller was right. He said it. You know, it looks great condition. I I tend to agree. This is in great the joystick port, but otherwise good. Here's the inside of the. Uh, it's all clean. Thirty five year, just over thirty five years old. This that needs to dry overnight. I don't. It's, I did air dry it really good, but I want to let it sit. Same with the top. I got this. The top of the. Uh, See how clean it was. It had all, all dust in the grill, in the ribs. They call it, Atari called it ribs. I'm going to call it grills because ribs, you know, <laughs> the implicate the. All right, Atari 800, nice and clean. I scrubbed this too, but I tried to be gentle. I didn't want to scrub the, the label off, but it's. I've never seen it come off. I think you have to really try. And the shield. Hopefully wa water did not get in there, but there's like a little secret compartment. <laughs> you could hide something in one of these and no one would ever know. It, it, I don't think water, I know not much water, but even a drop or two. I guess it's aluminum. It's not going to rust, huh? It's not going to rust. Now my next thing is to clean the keyboard take all the keys off it's got green switches under here I think this is different this says stack pull this so this may be a different keyboard than the other one we'll find out it needs a proper job though take it apart guess we can do that upstairs alright this is before cleaning you can see the dust this is the stack pole, so it's different than the other Mitsumi. I think this one is not as good. I don't know. There are two keyboard variants for the Atari 800. You can see it's dirty. Just want to show. All right, let's get to it. All right. All the key caps are off, and this is dusted now. I, I used air can of air for this. And these are the switches, green. Very similar to the Mitsumi stack pole. Okay, it is done. Cleaned. All clean. Beautiful. This little white th uh, number if you're cleaning one of these it uh... it will wipe off so careful careful with a wet rag on that number kinda nice to keep it right no need don't want to wipe, wash off the original number Atari put on there might be a number you know a sequential number applied to each uh, keyboard sort of a serial number alright it does it does feel different than the the other keyboard. A little lighter, not as not as heavy, I guess. Okay, it's all put back together, and I've got this is the one on the left is the uh, the the new one for me, and then the one on the right I've put here because uh, well to compare the color because the the light in here is sort of not the best and hard to gauge what is good color. Maybe I can get... There we go. And see some of the color difference. This one has been probably stored in a hot garage for years and the heat in the garage uh, makes the bromide uh, and fire retardant 
turn the color of the plastic. So the new, this one, wow, it's actually the color. It's very, very minimally yellow. Yeah, there it is. All right, let's let's try to power it on. All right, here's the moment of truth here. Uh, it hasn't been powered on. Who knows how long? Oh, good. I hear. It. Yes. Oh, I think I forgot to plug the keyboard back in. That's my fault. <laughs> now I gotta open it all back up. It works. I can see memo pad. I just forgot to plug the keyboard back in. <laughs> nice. It works. Now, so far, we don't know. I hear I hear sound. The pokey the sound chip works. That's really good. All right, let's let's plug up the keyboard. Welcome back. It's all I had to take it apart. <laughs> Quite a time-consuming process. All right, let's try it again here. Keyboard All right. Yeah. Okay. Let's check every key. We should get. I have sound on this speaker down here under the monitor. Okay. Okay. Escape. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, caps works. Yeah. Huh. Awesome. Reset works. Wow. Keyboard does work. Hopefully you got all the keyboard straight. Let's try let's try a game with sound. I need to plug a joystick in. One of the joystick ports is broken. Joystick's not easy to plug in. Now it's an 8-bit computer. Awesome. This is maybe the best platformer on this on the Atari bit. I think I went the wrong. Uh, I forget which way is the right way, which way is the wrong. I think he's supposed to go the other way, but too late now, huh? Seems to be working great, huh? The bat, if I take too long, the bat will come get me. Seems to be working great, huh? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Don't touch the... <laughs> Oh shoot. Oh 
world so I'm supposed to go this way. I think, I think I'm supposed to go this way. See now I've got two blues and a red. Oh, nope. Anyway, there it is. It seems to be working, huh? Let's try another game. Here's the Pac-Man, the improved one. Yeah, we're recording. This is uh, the one that came out. I don't like the Pac-Man that came out originally. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. The sound is a little distorted or something. Oh shoot. That's my That's my joystick not working perfectly. Of course. Sure. Got him. Ah. I think th I think this is the final. They're I think they kept working on it. You can select your start. Let's see, here's the start. This will be f much faster. Oops. Much faster. Yeah. Oh, I did not mean to do that. I'm using this craft. It's it's. I need to I need to fix it. It's not even going down here. I was hitting down. It's not even going down. Yeah, I don't think it's the joystick. It could be the computer. There, it's going down now. Uh oh. All right. Cool. One quick thing, uh, the door, I use, the, this is what I use, synthetic uh, multi-purpose grease or super lube. Uh, it's not expensive on, e on uh, Amazon or eBay. I, should, I think it was under $10. And this is important for the cartridge door. Uh, not for the lever, but for the hinges, for the lubrication here. Let's, let's open this. I'm trying to not break the pins here on this, so I... I don't plan on opening this very often, but see how, look, it's not squeaking, the door. The, here are the hinges in here, and there's joints that need lubrication on like three or four points on each side. Um, but it doesn't squeak now, and it, it, do, it did. It was very dry, squeaky, and you do not want to funk, operate the door when it's like that. Um, it, could, it increases the chance of it snapping or breaking. So this, this synthetic grease, look at it, not a squeak at all. It's nice. Uh, Alright, so that's that's what I recommend for uh, fixing the cartridge door. Uh, you know, the, the hinges lubricating. Do not use household oil or any kind of regular oil because that will permanently stain the plastic. And uh, 
that you cannot get it out. This stain, I don't think. It gets into the plastic. Thanks, guys. All right, so I'm happy this was untested, and uh, it works great. Um, the one joystick port is broken, I think, port 4. And fixing that is difficult. There's a $10 eBay, someone is selling, uh, they've been selling for a long time, the replacement ports for these, but I don't know. That's a solder, I mean, I can, I can solder, but that one looks, I don't know, I don't know if I can do that. That's a more complicated solder. Maybe I can, maybe I can. I need a desol way to desolder. Anyway, so there it is, this uh, Atari 800. Now I have a mid-grade one. I have a, a I have a brown brown one, a mid-grade one, this one, and I have a near mint, so I'm I'm happy. I don't need any more 800s. I think I'm good. Thanks for watching. See you next time.